Hi there. In this video, I'm going to give you some advice on how to compose the discussion section of your psychology lab report. The discussion section is a particularly important part of your lab report because it's where you demonstrate thinking around the results and the methodology of your research. So you need to make sure that you include the right information in this section of your lab report. Your discussion section needs to achieve five key objectives. The first of which is to restate the results of your study in words. The second is to consider the results of your study in relation to previous literature on the topic you've been investigating. Third, you need to consider the strengths and the limitations of your study. Fourth, you need to consider what additional research may have been suggested by the study that you've conducted. And fifth, you need to consider the implications of your research and also provide the reader with a conclusion or a take home message concerning the main finding or findings of your research. Let's turn our attention to the restatement of results first. Pretty self-explanatory really, but there are a couple of things you need to bear in mind. The first is to restate the results of your study in words. Don't just copy and paste the stats from your results section into your discussion section. The second thing you need to remember is that it's important you say whether your results support or refute the hypothesis or hypotheses you've put forward for your study. Here's the part of the discussion section in the example lab report where the author restates the results of the study. You might want to pause the video at this point to give yourself the chance to read the text in full and then press play when you're ready to continue. The thing to notice about this text is that the author has given a very concise account of the main results of the reported study and then indicated the relationship between the results of the study and the hypothesis that was put forward for the study. Note the absence of any statistical information in this passage of text. The author has relied solely on words to restate the results of the study. Turning our attention to the integration of your results with previous research next. What you need to do here is compare the findings you've obtained in your study with those obtained in previous research. Particularly research that you've identified in the introduction part of your lab report as being important in motivating your own research. So maybe you found that your results are consistent with previous research. If so, what does that tell you about the topic you're studying? Maybe your results are inconsistent with previous research. If so, why might that be the case? Let's have a look at how this works out in practice. Here's an extract from the discussion section of the example lab report that deals with the integration of the results from this study. There's quite a bit of text on the screen, so pause the video at this point to give yourself the chance to read it in full, and then press play when you're ready to continue. Hopefully, having read this passage of text, you'll have noted that what the author is doing is comparing the results of this study to those of previous research, and in particular, the research that had been identified in the introduction as the kind of studies that motivated this particular piece of research. But the author's gone beyond just pointing out similarities and differences. Where a difference has occurred in the finding obtained in this study compared to a finding obtained in a previous study, they've tried to explain that difference, account for why the difference has occurred. And when you're doing your integration of results in your own discussion section, it's particularly important that you don't gloss over differences between the findings you've obtained and the findings from previous research. Always try and account for why those differences may have occurred. Turning to the strengths and limitations of your work now. Students are usually only too willing to sing the praises of their study and identify parts of their study that are particularly merit worthy. But perhaps understandably, they suddenly clam up slightly when it comes to critique in their study. This is probably due to concern that if they identify issues with their study, they'll lose marks. But actually, it's the other way round. Tutors want to see that students have a good grasp of the limitations of their study as well as the strengths of their study. 
So, is there anything about the way that your research was conducted that might undermine our confidence in the validity or reliability of the findings you've obtained? Maybe you've realised that there was a confounding variable that wasn't controlled for. Or perhaps you're aware of problems that occurred when you were conducting the study, maybe practical issues, for example. These are the kind of things you want to reflect on in considering the strengths and the limitations of your work. Let's have a look at how that works in practice. Here's an extract from the strengths and limitations part of the discussion of our sample lab report. Once again, pause the video to give yourself a chance to read the text in full, then press play to continue. Hopefully it's obvious from reading this passage of text that the author is conveying one of the strengths of the study to the reader. But rather than just saying that the observational nature of the design of the study is an advantage when it comes to looking at naturalistic road crossing behaviour, they're also explaining why this is the case. So don't forget, when you're identifying the strengths of your study, you need to explain your reasoning. Here's another extract from the strengths and limitations part of the discussion section in our example lab report. Once again, pause the video to give yourself a chance to read the text in full and press play when you're ready to continue. So you can see from this passage of text that the author has now moved on to identifying one of the limitations of the study, specifically that the demographics of the participants being observed wasn't recorded. But they've gone beyond this and also explained why they think this is a significant omission. And they've used evidence to back up their reasoning. And this is what you should do when you're identifying limitations with your research. First of all, be explicit in your reasoning. And secondly, if you can, try and back up or substantiate your reasoning with reference to previous research. Turn into future research now. This is where you consider what kinds of work might usefully follow on from your own research. Perhaps you've obtained a result that needs some kind of follow-up, perhaps to clarify it in some way. Maybe you've identified a methodological issue with your research that needs further research to rectify it. Or maybe your research has just suggested some other factor that requires future research to address. These are the kind of things you want to reflect on when you're considering further research that follows on from your own study. Let's have a look at how that works in practice. Here's a suggestion for future research taken from the discussion section of our sample lab report. There's not a huge amount more to add to this other than to point to the way that this responds to the previously identified limitation of the reported study. You might recall that the limitation previously identified was that the demographics of the participants who were crossing the road wasn't noted, and that this may have been an oversight because previous research has indicated that gender can be a factor along with whether someone crosses the road alone or with a company on the safety of road crossing decisions. If you identify a limitation associated with your study, it's always good practice to try and indicate to the reader how that limitation might be addressed in future research. Finally, let's consider the implications and conclusions of your study. This is where you identify the theoretical and the practical applications of your main findings. You also need to provide the reader with a conclusion or a take home message that they can leave with having read your lab report. Let's see how that works in practice. Here's an extract from the implications and conclusions part of the discussion section of our example lab report. You might want to pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to read the text in full and press play when you're ready to continue. In this passage of text, you can see the author identify one of the practical applications of the results of this study in that they're suggesting that the results of the study should be borne in mind by road safety campaigns that could advise pedestrians that they're more likely to make unsafe road crossing decisions when they're crossing the road with an acquaintance than when they're crossing the road alone. 
Here's another extract from the implications and conclusions part of the discussion section in our example lab report. Once again, pause the video to give yourself a chance to read the text in full and then press play when you're ready to continue. In this passage of text, you can see the author deliver a really nice concluding statement based on the results of this study. When you're delivering your own concluding statement, avoid introducing any new material for consideration at this point, and also avoid any lengthy reiteration of material from other sections of your lab report. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification if you want to know when I post new content. Thanks very much. Thank you.